Welcome. In this video, the event, Snow Realm Peregrination of Azure Lane, which is currently running from the 29th of February to the 14th of March, will be summarized. Throughout the video, there will be spoilers for the story of Azure Lane. If you don't want to be spoiled, please go and play the game. The event story begins with the Northern Parliament's covert operation, which involves transporting supplies to Socatra via air and then using a special purpose submarine to reach Antarctica. The itinerary is meticulously planned to maintain secrecy. Despite concerns about limited firepower, the mission's focus is on obtaining a special mineral rather than combat. Sovetsky Soyuz delegates responsibilities to her team before departing. Meanwhile, at the Azure Lane Provisional Base, other factions are also mobilizing for Antarctica, but the Eagle Union's delayed response raises suspicions. The commander plans to proceed cautiously and devise contingency plans amidst growing uncertainty. Several days later, aboard the Northern Parliament submarine Kalinka in the Antarctic Ocean, the ship girls marvel at the icy landscape as they surface. Pamiat Mercuria shares excitement about the untouched continent's vastness. Soyuz reflects on a past incident involving white goop. As they break through the ice, the novelty wears off, and the desolation becomes apparent. Ogevnoi's enthusiasm wanes, prompting Sverpi to question why no nation has claimed Antarctica. Soyuz suggests discussing it in a more comfortable setting, with Mercuria preparing drinks for a history lesson with Soyuz. The submarine voyage continues as the girls gather in the mess hall. Soyuz prepares to answer Sverpi's question about Antarctica's history. She explains that the Antarctic Treaty, which suspended territorial claims and placed the continent under Azure Lane management. She detailed the treaty's provisions and the subsequent actions of various factions. The girls discuss the treaty's implications and the research station's activities. Pamiat shares information about the Antarctic animals, emphasizing their protection. Talene welcomes the submarine to Antarctica when they arrive, expressing surprise at Soyuz's visit. She provides map data and plans to meet them outside the station. As the submarine nears Antarctica, the landscape of icebergs and the research station, Marini, came into view. The girls discuss the station's visibility in the white expanse and the importance of being findable by allies. Upon arrival, they are greeted in person by Talen, who guides them inside to escape the cold. In the warmth of Marini's interior, they notice Pamiat acting differently, prompting speculation about the harsh environment's effect. Meanwhile, Soyuz requests a situation report and information on a unique crystal affecting riggings and the environment. Talin shares updates, including the Eagle Union's increased presence and Iron Blood's absence from the snowmelt area. Concerns arise about potential conflict, but no engagements have occurred. Soyuz expresses interest in examining a crystal sample. In Mirani's testing area, Soyuz examines a large crystal sample, intrigued by its resonance with riggings. As she touches it, she is unexpectedly transported to a mysterious space and experiences a surge of power before breaking free. Back in the room, her rigging has transformed into a powerful new form. Puzzled by the experience, she ponders its significance. Meanwhile, a communication is interrupted, informing of an attack on Iron Blood's fleet, prompting heightened security. Palmiat suggests aiding Iron Blood and Sovetsky Soyuz agrees deciding to complete their goals in Antarctica while remaining vigilant. Upon further consideration, Soyuz discusses the possibility of aiding Ironblood with Poltava, but ultimately decides against it, unlike what she originally planned, seeing an opportunity for reconnaissance. They spot the Ironblood's fortress-like base, raising suspicions. Suddenly, Soyuz experiences strange hallucinations, witnessing visions of a vast cityscape. Concerned, her comrades attributed it to the rigging transformation and urged her to rest. At the Iron Blood's fortified base in Antarctica, Soyuz and her team receives a warm welcome from Konigsberg. Konigsberg briefed them on the dire situation. The research station near the snowmelt was under attack by an unidentified enemy, with communication being cut off. Despite the base's limitations, 
Soyuz proposes cooperation and information sharing among the factions, along with an evacuation plan. Konigsberg agrees, acknowledging the need for unity. Soyuz then announces their plan to investigate the snowmelt area, aiming to resolve the crisis. With well wishes exchanged, they depart for the next mission. Pamiet and Poltava discuss Konigsberg's misunderstanding about Soyuz's rigging upgrade and the Eagle Union's fleet. Poltava suspects Soyuz has a hidden agenda beyond the crystals, prompting Soyuz to reveal classified intel about a doomsday bunker called the Ring of the Wise beneath the snowmelt area. This bunker's existence was unknown to many, including Konigsberg. Despite its dormant state, it's speculated to be related to the snowmelt, along with the unidentified enemy and the crystal. Soyuz feels compelled to investigate further, recognizing the potential consequences of its discovery. As the group continues on, they hear waterfalls nearby, a surprising phenomenon caused by the snowmelt revealing underground rivers. They cautiously ascend the mountain, noticing a glowing crystal, indicating the presence of rigging superchargers. Svarpi touches it, experiencing only frostbite. Realizing they need to investigate the Doomsday Bunker, the Ring of the Wise, they search for its entrance, relying on a transmitter to guide them. They remain vigilant for the unidentified enemy as they begin their search. Soyuz eventually locates the hidden entrance to the bunker, leading the group inside after a brief rest. Instead of high-tech corridors, they find an ordinary office covered in dust, which serves as a facade for the real bunker. Soyuz reveals the hidden entrance, and they navigate through multiple security layers, including a trapped elevator to reach the interior. Soyuz explains that someone has already activated the bunker's systems, causing gradual heating and the snow melt. In the security room, they find confusing logs indicating pre-existing activity in the bunker. Suspicious of an intruder, they split up to investigate the manufacturing area and the data center for evidence. They proceed cautiously, aware of potential dangers. The ship drills continue deeper into the shelter, navigating through various security areas and shuttle systems until they reach the manufacturing area. Inside, they discover a production line creating crystals from ice, rock, and sand, all of which were destroyed as soon as they entered. Despite the lack of evidence, Soyuz confirmed the crystal's authenticity. With the machines destroyed, they decide to investigate the data center next in hopes of finding more answers. The elevator stopped at a floor where the ship girls find themselves in a corridor different from the others, adorned with fancy decor and paintings. As they inspect the artwork, they find the art grouped under themes like Morning Sun, Setting Sun, and Utopia, each telling a different story. Some depicted scenes of victory, celebrations, and peaceful coexistence, while others were more unsettling, like a child's sketch of a solemn event. Despite their curiosity, they eventually decided to proceed to the data center for further investigation, leaving the mysteries of the art gallery behind for now. As they delve deeper, the ship girls began to marvel at the breathtaking landscape surrounding the Ring of the Wise. Despite being underground, they are greeted by stunning vistas of water, towering rock formations, and a sky of blue ice. Their excitement is palpable as they savor their newfound freedom from the bunker's sterile interiors. Wondering about the mysteries of their surroundings, they speculate about the thick mist in the distance and the depths of the water below. Soyuz, having been involved in the bunker's construction, provides some insight but admits to not knowing much about the area. Eager to uncover more, they hasten towards the ring's data center, ready to explore the secrets hidden within this unique landscape. Soyuz manages to recover some data, confirming that the crystals were manufactured in the bunker and the snowmelt area was intentionally created by the heat dissipation system. The purpose was likely to incite conflict or expose the bunker's existence. Further investigation revealed that the underwater drones were dispatched before the crystal production, but they were all lost. A strange vision follows, hinting at observers' involvement. Soyuz theorizes that someone orchestrated events to lead factions to Antarctica, potentially to locate observers' mainframe. Despite uncertainties, she concludes it was a trap and urges a retreat from Antarctica. 
Meanwhile, back in the Azure Lane Provisional Base, Helena informs the commander that the Northern Parliament has reached their research station, but all communication has been lost due to jamming. Concerned about the situation, the commander seeks assistance from Helena Meta through an encrypted channel. Helena Meta assures help, but keeps the mastermind's identity a secret, urging the commander to uncover it. The commander requests a direct line to Saratoga for coordination. With the connection established, the commander gathers real-time intel on fleet movements in Antarctica. Despite challenges, the commander resolves to gather more information before taking action. Back in Antarctica, and after escaping through an emergency exit, the team contemplates their next move. Suddenly, Soyuz finds herself in an opulent banquet hall hosted by Pamiat. Though tempted by the illusion of paradise, Soyuz realizes it's a trap to deter them from their mission. Pamiat tries to persuade Soyuz to stay, but Soyuz sees through the deception, challenging Pamiat's ideals. Ultimately, Pamiat Mercuria's true identity as Pamiat Mercuria Meta is revealed, leaving Soyuz to confront the mastermind behind the illusion. Soyuz confronts Pamiat Meta, who reveals both her identity, again, and her intentions. She explains that she's from another timeline, who seeks to recreate her past glory. As they step outside, Soyuz realizes Pamiat manipulated events to lure her here. Pamiat acknowledges using Observer's mainframe as bait and invites Soyuz to guess her true goal. Soyuz sees through Pamiat's manipulations, refusing to accept a stagnant past and instead advocating for forging a new future. Pamiat argues for embracing the past, citing its familiarity and the fealty of fighting against fate. Soyuz counters, emphasizing the importance of seizing one's destiny and breaking free from manipulation. Pamiat reveals her tragic past and desire to recreate her lost paradise. Soyuz, recognizing the parallels with her own struggles, vows to resist Pamiat's temptation. Pamiat Meta reveals her first goal, to create a paradise-like world by summoning an enormous machine. Despite the confrontation, Pamiat remains unpredictable. Soyuz sees through her facade and prepares for battle as Pamiat summons gazers. In an instant, the illusion dissipates, returning Soyuz to reality. She instructs her comrades to retreat and warns of the incoming Gazer attack, prompting immediate action. Gazers emerge, confirming the immediate threat, and Soyuz orders a full retreat for all forces. The Antarctic situation quickly escalates as red dots indicating hostiles fill the tactical map. Memphis informs the commander about the Gazer's invasion, sparking concern about the source of the Divine Vestige. Meanwhile, Saratoga and the Operation Frozen Angel Fleet engage the Gazers while the Northern Parliament retreats. As the commander prepares to take control of the battlefield, Sovetsky Soyuz leads her fleet to the submarine's rendezvous point amidst the chaos. Soyuz realizes the commander's thorough monitoring and agrees to cooperate. Later, the commander pieces together the events leading up to the current crisis and instructs Memphis to establish a temporary command center at the tribunal's base. The commander also plans to contact Bismarck urgently. With preparations underway, the commander gets ready to communicate with Saratoga and navigate the unfolding situation. After some contemplation, the commander reaches out to Saratoga with an encrypted call. Despite her initial surprise, Saratoga quickly realizes it's the commander and acknowledges the urgency of the situation. They discuss the Operation Frozen Angel and the true nature of the crystals, acknowledging that they're part of a siren plot. Saratoga expresses concern about the commander's recent decisions and behavior, questioning why they're shouldering so much responsibility. She also reveals her desperation to save Lexington and explains her willingness to risk everything for a chance to cure her. Despite the risks, Saratoga is determined to see it through. Ultimately, she entrusts the commander with the command of the fleet and urges them to utilize all available resources to secure victory, including the defensive weaponry around Antarctica permitted by the Antarctic Treaty. With mutual trust established, Saratoga pledges her unwavering support as they face the impending threat together. As anticipated, Clemenceau swiftly approved the request to utilize the Tribunal's base. 
After concluding the conversation with Saratoga, the commander proceeds to the command center, where both the Eagle Union and Northern Parliament had already established a chain of command. Memphis updated them on the new rendezvous route for Saratoga and Soyuz's fleets, as well as the ongoing evacuation orchestrated by the research station. Upon entering the command center, Clemenceau applauded the strategic maneuvering from afar, humorously suggesting a future in politics due to the commander's leadership prowess. The commander brushes off the praise, emphasizing that the battle had only just begun. Clemenceau informs the commander that she has set up a closed communication channel with Bismarck's Zwei, which was ready in a secret room. In the clandestine meeting with Bismarck's Zwei, she expresses surprise at the direct contact and speculated about the purpose of the conversation. The commander briefs Bismarck on the current situation, including the threat posed by the Gazers and the need for unified action across factions. Bismarck agrees to grant the commander immediate control over her forces in all future battles, entrusting them with the responsibility to lead and forge the future they envisioned. Returning to the corridor, Clemenceau commends the successful outcome of the meeting and discloses her communication with the Royal Navy's fleet, who are struggling to respond to the Gazer threat. She suggests leveraging the commander's authority under the Antarctic Treaty to coordinate their efforts. Despite her offer to send the message on their behalf, the commander opts to address the Royal Navy personally, declining Clemenceau's assistance. Thanks to Helena Meta and the ship girls' efforts, jamming in Antarctica was resolved, enabling stable strategic communication. All faction fleets were unified under the Azure Lane Command, with reinforcements from Bismarck and the Eagle Union. Sarah, along with her supporters, joined the operation and the evacuation from Antarctica proceeds smoothly, led by Konigsberg and escorted by station fleets. Pymat Meadows' actions indicated she was improvising rather than planning ahead. Neutralizing her seems key to ending the crisis, and Soyuz's team plans to lure her into an ambush, supported by air and naval forces. Iron Blood and Eagle Union fleets await the ambush, including Saratoga's powerful arsenal. As night descends over Antarctica, the long-awaited confrontation approaches. Pomiat Meza faces off against the assembled fleets, taunting them with her presence. The ambush was set, and the forces prepared to engage. Pomiat reveals crucial information about Observer's weakened state, being disconnected from her mainframe and unable to access essential resources. Despite Soyuz's attempts at negotiation, Pamiat Meta remained resolute in her goals. The showdown begins, with Pamiat challenging the fleets to stop her if they could. With a resounding explosion, another gazer falls, marking 30 minutes into the battle where the ship girls hold a significant advantage. As they exchange banter, Soyuz realizes Pamiat wasn't putting up much of a fight, suspecting a hidden strategy akin to a past report on an elusive enemy. Pamiat unleashes eerie laughter, freezing the sea and ship girls, revealing her motive to uncover a past linked to the Revolutionary Front. Soyuz challenges her, arguing for a future over dwelling over the past. Meanwhile, Helena assures the commander of Pamiat's bluff and cognitive influence. With renewed resolve, the commander prepares to face the battle ahead, armed with the knowledge and Helena's protection against Pamiat's influence. At the tribunal headquarters, Helena's defense and Soyuz's decisive battle actions provided the necessary advantage against Pamiat Meta. Despite her attempts to hinder them with a thin layer of ice, their fleet easily broke through. Pamiat was compared to the other Meta encountered, suggesting she posed a challenge but paled in comparison to the Arbiters. However, an uneasy feeling lingered as the battle progressed too smoothly, and suspicions arose about Pamiat's hidden strategy. Suddenly, an attack on the command center disrupts communication, signaling Pamiat's shift to a more direct assault. The commander, with Helena's protection, realizes the danger posed by Pamiat's cognitive influence and the need to secure the command network. As the attack intensifies, the commander and Soyuz find themselves in a surreal space, reminiscent of previous encounters with the Wisdom Cube's information. They discuss their shared experiences and speculate on the nature of this place before resolving to explore further. 
Soyuz and the commander open a door in front of them, revealing a palace reminiscent of the Imperia. In the recordings, they encounter beyond the door, various interactions from Pamia at Mercuria's past with her comrades are revealed. These recordings showcase different aspects of her personality and experiences, ranging from mundane tasks to emotional moments of reflection. Each time they exited a recording, they re-entered the door to find a new scene from Pamia at Mercuria's past, gradually uncovering the complexity of her character and her relationships with others. In the final scene, they find themselves in a surreal battlefield where time seemed frozen. Facing a version of Pamiat Mercuria embodying the essence of all iterations of her existence. She explained her unique nature and engaged in a conversation with the commander and Soyuz, expressing curiosity about their presence and intentions. Suddenly, they're awakened in the Tribunal Medical Station, where their comrades inform them of their victory in Antarctica and express gratitude for their leadership. Despite the success of the operation, lingering doubts remained about Pamiat Mercuria Meta, Observer, Project Dawn, and the mysterious occurrences in the memory space. In the midst of the powerful explosion, Pamiat Mercuria Meta finds herself surprised that her attack hasn't stopped her enemies. Soyuz confronts her, questioning her motives and actions. Despite admitting defeat, Pamiat Meta remains cryptic about her true intentions suggesting that the battle is far from over and hinting at future conflicts. She urges Soyuz to be prepared for what's to come, hinting at a potential alliance with a powerful yet conflicting figure in the future. Finally, she bids farewell, promising to continue watching and waiting for her chance to strike. Thank you for watching. Please follow my Twitter for updates and please check out my other videos covering the Snow Realm Peregrination event for Azure Lane.